if you clicked on this video, then you're probably in the right place. Because although the title seems incredibly underwhelming to most, I mean, how to drive a golf ball 200 yards, I mean, most people won't click on that and they'll think it's a joke. But if you did, it's because you're in the right place, because you're really struggling with your distance. And there's probably not very many videos out there that are targeted just for you. So if you're either, you know, hit the ball really poorly with your driver, or maybe you're just an older golfer who has started to really struggle with distance, then you might aspire to getting back out to 200 yards or more again, and that might seem like an impossible task at the moment. So I really feel for you. Getting it out there 200 yards is really gonna you know, advance your golf game where you can enjoy it more. So right after the break, I'm gonna show you the nuts and bolts of how to hit a ball 200 yards or more. So stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve from hititlonger.com. I'm on a journey to hit my tee shots longer and straighter. If you are too, you're really gonna enjoy my channel. So, hey, consider subscribing and watch the end of this video. This is the start of a series that I'm really excited about called uh, achieving your next milestone distance. So I'm going to do these for every 25 yards. Um, hopefully if my wrist will continue to heal, I'll be able to take this series all the way up to 350 yards, which is about how far I used to hit it uh, before I get injured. Um, so today starting at 200, let's take a look at some of the things, uh, minimums that is required to hit a ball out there 200 yards and some of the key aspects uh, for the people who aren't hitting it 200 yards yet. Okay, so number one is the driver that I'm using. So I've gone up to, I, I went into my collection, I, I got a, uh, it's, it's a 10, 10 and a half loft, um, regular flex shaft. Um, now that is the minimum amount of loft and shaft uh, that you'll be that you'll be doing this with. Um, I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to be super duper efficient with the ten and a half. If you're just struggling to hit the ball 200 yards, it's more likely that it's going to take you an 11 and a half, 12, maybe even a 13 degree driver um, to get your disc. So. Uh, up and loft is what we've got to do. Uh, typically people who aren't hitting it out there 200 are hitting it too low. And while it might seem like it's rolling somewhere, you're just losing too much air carry and uh, distance is really being lost because of that. So adjustable drivers I really recommend because hey, maybe you'll get to the 200 and then you'll start setting your sights. Watch a few more of my videos and set your sights on the 225 milestone next. And then you, you won't have to go out and buy another driver. You just be able to, you know, tune it in for the 225 drive. Um, so some of the minimum requirements after that, um, after you make sure the driver fits. Oh, one last thing on the driver. Um, this is, says 10 and a half on the bottom, but you know, stated loft doesn't mean a heck of a lot because every model driver, in fact, even from year to year, it could almost be the same model, plays a little differently. You know, they might change the shape of the head a little bit. They might uh, move the weight just a little bit here and there. And because, uh, you know, they think it's going to sell more. Or maybe that's just how the, the design turned out to be. And, and they make a marketing uh, campaign just for how what they did with the driver. So certain model clubs, TaylorMade, Titleist, Cobra, they all play a little bit different. Um, some are right on their stated loft. Some can play up to a degree and a half lower. Like if you were hitting an M1 TaylorMade, M3, M5, um, those generally play lower than their stated loft compared to some other clubs. So you have got to beware. And that's why the adjustable hosel I really recommend here. So you can dial in uh, the right loft you need. Um, so the ball flight that you're looking for, um, if you're just aspiring to hit the ball 200 yards or more, is going to look like a towering high rainbow. If you're hitting low line drives or even medium long uh, line drives, 
it's just simply not high enough. You, we, we want it to really get up and launch. So I've got the TrackMan set up here. On here we'd be looking to hit uh, 17 degrees aloft would be great. Given that I've only got a 10 and a half here to get to 17, it means I'm really going to have to hit up on the ball uh, quite a bit. Um, let me give it a couple shots here. What I'm looking for is the minimum speed I'll be able to do this with, oh, it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 77 or 78 miles an hour will be the minimum amount of club head speed I'm going to need to hit at 200. It's going to be a sliding scale, so at 77 miles an hour, all my other variables are really going to have to be in line. Launch angle, spin rate, descent angle, contact will all have to be pretty much perfect. So you're going to have to go up. If you consistently want it 200 or more, you're probably going to have to be a little bit above 80. So let me hit a couple. We'll check out the numbers on the track, man, and see how close I am with this club. Okay, that's just my first guess at about an 80 mile an hour swing. Let's check it out. All right, here's a good first example. I'm at 77 miles an hour, uh, and I've done it. I've, <laughs> first take, I swear. Um, I got where I wanted to. I'll, I'll show you the numbers here real close on the camera. Check that out. So at 77.2 miles an hour, I was able to produce a drive of 203 yards and like I said 17 degrees of launch there I was able to get 16 degrees of launch I only hit up on it one degree for some reason I was hoping for more but I, I'll try to do better on the next one so I can get the launch angle 17 maybe even 18 degrees towering high for this distance but the fact that I hit uh, you know very solidly a little bit up um, and I hit it pretty square, so I didn't have a ton of spin. Um, the ball was able to roll out and cross 200 yards. So really good example of what you can do um, with a limited amount of club head speed if you have the driver that fits you. And let's look at some of the other variables now that you're going to need and how you're going to achieve, achieve them because you might be struggling uh, to hit the ball this far. So one of the reasons, uh, one of the common reasons that golfers are net not able to even achieve the 200 yard barrier is because their swings tend to be very short not just in the back swing but also people who hit short tend to kind of quit on it or stop early in the follow-through um, i've got this orange whip out i love this thing for increasing back swing length follow-through length by the way these are for sale on my pro shop i'm going to put a link to the page where i sell this best um, I sell this for the best price on the internet you can't go wrong um, you have to go check it out if you like this drill if your swing is real short and what I do is just to do I call it the John Daly drill <laughs> if you remember him he just swings really long so I just go and all the way through at the top of the swing I'm trying to and then on the follow through, I'm trying to see the orange ball out of the right eye again. So I call that the John Daly drill. I don't try to do this for speed. There's no hurry. I just try to swing nice and long and rhythmically. And then I'm gonna try to apply it to the ball. Okay, so the next reason that's very common why golfers are unable to reach 200 yards on their tee shots is they swing too vertically and out to in and that usually results in a really bad open face combined with an outside in path that makes you slice so a lot of you out there watching this you probably have uh, enough club head speed to get it out there 200 plus no problem but it's just not being used efficiently so We've talked about getting a little bit more speed by lengthening out the backswing. Now we're going to talk about a little bit more efficiency 
by coming at the ball on an inside arc. So you can see in order to miss this basket uh, that I've set up, I'm going to have to swing it back around a curve from the inside. Not only is that going to help you um, a little bit um, with the slice, but it's also going to encourage an upstrike. You see, when you come out to in, it's a lot easier to hit down on the ball and hit that low to medium line drive that's just going to, it looks okay, but it's really sucking up our distance. So I'm going to see if I can try to hit a ball here around 80 miles per hour again without hitting this yellow basket. That drive had a real nice high ball flight. A little bit of a draw back to the center. So this is a really good efficient drive. Let me show you the camera. I swung a little bit faster on accident, but you can see what you can do at just 82 miles an hour. I was able to hit the ball 216 yards. Um, I hit up on it about two degrees there. I launched it at 16 degrees. So. Again, a nice, high, generous launch angle. Again, you can see my, uh, I'm going to show you, a perfect smash factor of 1.50. So I'm getting all the ball speed out of the club head speed I'm using. So that was a fairly efficient uh, ball. At higher speeds, our, our lower speeds, our, our higher lofted driver is going to allow us not only to launch it higher, but I want you to see the spin rate is in the upper 2000s here, 2844 spin rate, which is making the ball climb. Even though it's launching high, it's continuing to try to climb to keep it in the air longer. So I was able to get on that one 195 yards of carry distance out of only 82 miles an hour. That is really hitting it out there in the air for such low club head speed. That's why I was able to get such a good net yardage out of that. So. With the basket, it forced me to come. Um, in this case, it was just a little bit inside to out, but definitely not cutting across out to in, which would produce low pulls and tend to produce high slices with too much backspin that land and just kind of bounce to the right into the rough, uh, like a lot of people experience. Okay, you see here, I've added a little bit more to my setup. I've dragged my bag in here. And I've brought out a shaft with the head cover on it. Now, I think I'll be able to get underneath this no problem when I swing. But if you are an over-the-top golfer who loops and comes out down steeply, use an alignment stick or an old shaft so you don't break a, break a perfectly good club because you'll snap it off right about here if you make a bad swing. I've had people do this. You might even break the shaft you're swinging with. So you got to be real slow and cautious. But what this is going to do is it's going to help me bring my swing in shallow. In other words, from this angle, rather than from more of a, more of a vertical angle, which would tend to produce uh, very poor efficiency. Um, not only will you not be able to swing with the club head speed that you need to hit it 200 or more, but you won't be able to turn the club face over as easily and square it up for a, a little draw or a straight ball and that slice is going to cost you some more distance. So let me give this a try now. Again, I'm just shooting for somewhere in the range of, uh, you know, 80 miles an hour or so to get my 200 yards. Super straight drive. I did hit it a little low on the face. Let's see what happened here. Hey, I still won big time. Wow. 80 miles an hour, but I was able to hit the ball over 210 yards. So even though I hit it a little bit low on the face, um, 
the spin the spin allowed me to uh, it to kind of rise and stay in the air long enough to get out there. Terrific. Notice how I stayed underneath this shallow coming in and now the bucket is still there so I'm shallow and coming from the inside. So you don't need any specialized equipment to set this up on your range. You just, you see how I've set this bag up and then and the, and the shaft and you see I've left the bucket right in line with the, with the, the target line here um, to force me to have to swing uh, more of the correct way or the more, a more powerful way of doing things. Okay, let's talk about one more thing that's gonna help you get your driving distance consistently up to 200 or more. Um, 200 is a good number because from the white tees, uh, you're gonna get to most of the holes in regulation at that point. You know, the, the longest par four you're likely to encounter off of the white tees is probably 400 yards. So a good drive and a good three wood will get you maybe 30 yards from the green where you can just pitch it on and maybe putt for a par. That would be a, a huge uh, bonus over, let's say driving at 175 and slicing it into the trees where you, you just, you don't know what you're gonna make from there. Um, the last thing I'm gonna talk about here is how to snap the hands and let them turn over. This will be a heck of a lot easier to do once you get the club coming into that shallow inside out slot. It almost wants to turn over as opposed to the steep outside in. This angle is just simply not very conducive to the forces lending themselves to, to turning the wrists over like that. So you'll see what I'm doing here is essentially what you're, you'll be missing in this case is, is this movement right here. You see, just taking it 180 degrees over the top like that. Of course, going out to the ball will involve a little bit more sophisticated wrist action. Overall, you're really looking to straighten the right forearm and get it crossing over the folding left so that you can square the face or maybe even get it a little bit close to that inside path where you can actually make the ball curve right to left a little bit. That would be great. And that looks like this. It starts to here. It's crossing over like this, finishing like this. You see how this elbow is into the ribs and not escaping into a chicken wing mode like this. Now, if you're not clear on this precise motion, check out my channel. I've got lots of other videos that will talk more in detail about the motions that we've got to do and the drills you've got to do to get that going. So I'm going to give it a try here. Emphasis on letting my arms turn over. I think that'll hit the ground running. Let's check out the numbers on that one. A little toe hook, but I'm gonna show you that I was still able to eclipse 200 yards at under 80 miles per hour. So that's a win for sure. My launch angle was a little low at 13 and change because I did hit a little toe hook into the left side of the fairway there. Um, not a bad drive and certainly uh, met the requirements that we're looking for to get it over 200 yards with under 80 miles per hour is a big win. Let's try a couple more. All right, so, you know, the summary here is I'm using a driver with enough loft, soft enough shaft to get the ball up in the air quick. I am swinging down from the inside, shallow. I'm using a long enough backswing and follow through to achieve the necessary club speed but it's not all about club speed. There's people that can swing 90 miles an hour and not hit the ball 200 yards because they're not transferring the energy very efficiently. Okay, so. Uh, 
pole. That's going to be a really good one to look at. If you could hit a pole high and drawing like I just did, you're going to be on your way for sure. I think that was a really efficient ball. Yeah, so I want to show you what I got out of this one. Perfect strike. Hit it on the up. 81 miles an hour right on the nose but I hit it out there 219 yards. So that is due to me, number one, I'm hitting up. I've got a appropriate lofted driver, hitting it in the sweet spot with a lot of launch angle. So in this case, uh, about 15 degrees of launch angle. Um, I think my ideal would be a bit higher than that. I would like to say 17 would be absolutely ideal, but hell. 219 yards at 81 miles an hour. I'm hoping this is going to give you hope that you can still hit it out there because you probably can swing the swing speed if you're watching this video. And now you can see what the potential is when you just dial up the efficiency, the correct flight, the correct uh, sweet spot strike, and you can still get it out there pretty good. All right, so. We've learned today what it takes to hit it 200 yards or more off the tee. Um, I want you to do work on everything in the next few weeks that I've talked about in this video, at least the things that you feel like you're missing. And then, hey, watch the next one in this series, and that's going to be how to hit it 225. Um, once you can get it over 200, I don't think you're going to be all that limited in getting it 225. I'll talk about everything that you need, this, you know, a little different emphasis on the next video. Um, I want to thank Golf Development Complex, Moorpark, California, for their generosity and this beautiful view that you're seeing behind me. Um, look in the description down below, pick up the freebies that I'm giving away, one for uh, curing your slice, which will help you um, get down the fairway further, and my free ebook on how to hit the ball longer off the tee. What a package. You get this video, you get those two freebies. Um, let me know in the description if this is assisted in you hitting the ball longer. I'm hoping that it's going to give you lots of success going forward. And thanks again for watching the video. I, will, I hope that you will consider subscribing to my channel, watching some other videos. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you next time, hopefully in the 225 video.